pleasure to serve under your chairmanship today and um, may I refer the House to my entry in the Members Register of Interests and my previous occupation as a Director of Thompson Solicitors, a national firm of employment law specialists who conducted a number and who do conduct a number of subs uh, substantial number of employment tribunal cases on behalf of trade unions and their members. I congratulate my honourable friend, the member for Ellesmere Port and Neston for securing this debate today. It's an issue which I, like him, am deeply concerned about. And as he has outlined, the impact of the coalition government's tribunal fees has resulted in pricing people out of access to justice. The party opposite call themselves the party of working people, but if there is one single policy implemented which totally exposes that myth, it is the introduction and impact of employment tribunal fees. And of course, the government knew exactly what that impact would be. They knew because they and their Liberal Democrat coalition partners at the time were told repeatedly and forcefully that the proposal would decimate access to justice. But just like the issues of legal aid cuts, civil court fee increases, restrictions on judicial review, the trade union bill, the proposal to repeal the Human Rights Act, and the intended increase to the small claims limit, which was announced by the Chancellor in last week's spending review, employment tribunal fees were not introduced to solve a real problem. They were introduced in order to diminish the voice of ordinary working people, of trade unions and their members. And I'm sure the government will try to say that the rationale behind the introduction of these fees was to defray the cost of the tribunal service. But if that really was the rationale, then it has failed spectacularly because so few people can afford to bring claims that the revenue, as my honourable friend has mentioned, has not been generated for the tribunal service. The fact is that the Cabinet Office Minister, the Right Honourable Member for West Sussex, openly stated that the purpose of the fees was to deter people from bringing employment tribunal claims. He wrote in an article for the Telegraph website in March 2014, and I quote, Unscrupulous workers caused havoc by inundating companies with unfounded claims of mistreatment, discrimination or worse. Like Japanese knotweed, the soaring number of tribunal cases dragged more and more companies into its grip, squeezing the life and energy from Britain's wealth creators. And he went on to say that the tribunal system had, and I quote again, become a system that in too many cases was being ruthlessly exploited by people trying to make a fast buck. Where is the evidence for this? The fact is that if the situation really was, as the Minister was stating, the success rate in employment tribunal cases brought after the date of the introduction of fees would rise significantly because the fees would act as a disincentive to unmeritorious claimants. But what has actually happened? The success rate in cases has stayed at the same level as it was prior to the introduction of fees. So preventing access to justice via a high fee level is not just weeding out unmeritorious cases, and I accept there will be a few of those, it's actually weeding out nearly all cases. So in that latter respect, the policy has been tremendously successful. Fees have had a severe negative impact on the ability of people, particularly those on low and average household incomes, and more vulnerable members of society to access the justice system. In my view, it is a shameful intention. A government minister openly stating that he and his coalition partners wanted to prevent members of the public from accessing the justice system. <coughs> so as we've heard, a 69% drop in single applicant well, cases. Well, of course, I'll give away. Very much. I'm sure my honourable friend isn't surprised at the attack on hard-working people in the workplace wanting to seek justice because she has, like me and other members of this house, experienced the Gaggenbeard Part 1, the Gaggenbeard Part 2, uh, and what's classified as a trade union bill. All in all, it's a concerted attack on people who just want to get on in life. And if there is a problem in terms of justice in the workplace, they want the ability to challenge that? My friend is absolutely right. I couldn't have put it better myself. Um, 69% drop in single applicant cases since the introduction of fees, but there are a couple of other statistics that I just wanted to comment on, which are the 90% drop, 90% in sex discrimination cases, and the 45% drop in pregnancy-related pregnancy unfair dismissal cases. For me, this is yet another example of the Prime Minister's problem with women. He doesn't want public money spent on women, so women bear the brunt of the 75% of his government's public sector spending cuts. 
He doesn't want to do anything about the grossly unfair VAT T regime, the tampon tax, so he cuts funding to domestic violence refuges and rape counselling services, and then instead makes women pay for those services themselves with the VAT that we pay on sanitary products. And if any of us are subject to sex discrimination at work or sacked because we're pregnant, he prices us out of access, accessing an employment tribunal to challenge that unlawful treatment. Of course I'll give way. Um, I thank my honourable friend for giving way. Does this not make a mockery of the claim of the Prime Minister in this House at PMQs to me across the chamber that he is now a feminist? How does that <laughs> at all marry up with that statement? <laughs> Uh, my right honourable friend makes a very valid point. Irony is alive and well in this House. I don't quite know where to start with my thanks to the Prime Minister on the way uh, he, invis he treats uh, women. Now, turning now to what I expect the bench opposite will refer to as their mechanism to mitigate pricing people out of justice, the fee remission system. Given that affordability of fees is a central issue in this debate, the effectiveness of the remission system to address this is an important consideration. But the reality of the fee remission system is that it is little more than a fig leaf. For each separate fee incurred, a separate application for fee remission with detailed evidence of income must be provided. And the guidance booklet for this, um, to guide people through this process, is 31 pages long. The preparation of applications can take up to 30 minutes each, increasing the costs of the case every time a court fee is incurred. And that work also has an impact on the time of court and tribunal staff, and it represents an unnecessary bureaucracy, as well as a backward step on this government's stated intention towards deregulation, efficiency and cost-cutting. In a speech to the Engineering Employers Federation in November 2011, the then Business Secretary Vince Cable said, quote, I want to make it very clear that for those with a genuine claim, fees will not be a barrier to justice. We will ensure that there is a remission system for those who need help. The latest available information on remission comes from statistics issued by the Employment Tribunal. And this shows that in the period from July 2013 to June 2015, only 17.7% of issue fees requested were remitted. My friend has commented on the redundancy fund. Um, where claimants are being forced to pay fees, tribunal fees, out of their redundancy pay. Um, this is an issue that I really do hope that the Justice Select Committee will address in their report when it is published. But I hope that the Justice Select Committee will look, um, when it publishes its report on access to justice, specifically at the problem of employment tribunal fees, which are an, a terrible problem which is affecting women particularly, and I would ask the Minister to take these comments back to his colleagues to ensure that employment tribunal fees are scrapped. Yeah. 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 Richard Arkless.